Well, we are not quite a lion, but definitely a hairy beast. Now, these are olive baboons, and we can see a warthog in the background as well. Now, so slightly different species to the chakma baboon, and and uh, they're much fluffier. And that's obviously to do with quite a bit to do with the high altitudes. And oh, is that little one in a tree up there? You can just see the tree bending. Oh, it looks like he might fall. Hang on. Hey, little one. It looks like he's having the best time. So they, they are similar in size to the Chakma baboons, except uh, they are just a lot fluffier. And in habits, very, very similar to Chakma baboons. And uh, they generally will like to feed on the ground, but will run to the trees at the first sign of a threat uh, and also will sleep in the trees. Oh, it looks like there's a little party going on there. All the little youngsters. Isn't that cute? Oh! <laughs> he was screaming before he even hit the, the next bush. <laughs> they are just such fascinating creatures to watch. And uh, always up to something. Uh, remember, hashtag Safari Live if you've got any questions for us. And it's an absolutely gorgeous here, uh, gorgeous here this morning, and lots of stuff going on. Well, we've come to this area to actually look for, for leopards. Uh, we haven't had too many good leopard sightings. Look at the little ones chasing each other. Big games going on. Now, if you go a little bit to the right there, there's a tiny one walking behind that warthog. There he comes out. Hey, little one. Now, Jane is wondering, what is the average baboon troop size in the Mara? Jane, I'd say probably 30 or 40. Um, I have seen some bigger ones. I think this is quite a big one, just in the area we are on the edge of um, the Mara River. I think there's quite a lot of good habitat for them. Now, it's not uncommon to see other animals feeding with the baboons, like the warthogs at the moment. Now, baboons are really great sentries. Oh, there's some wrestling going on between two little ones again on the on the log. Just sorry, just to the left. No, wrestle over. But there's oh, oh, up in the tree there. I think there's going to be some more pandemonium. And there's two youngsters. One beelining for the other. <laughs> Parishi Crash is wondering, what are they eating? Um, they're eating a whole host of different things. They're eating leaves, they're eating grass, um, uh, insects that they find. And so they, they will eat a whole host of different things. They are true omnivores. And the big males, will, when the Thompson's gazelles give birth, will actually rush in and grab grab the the babies so they will eat meat birds eggs uh, all sorts of different things they've got a very very varied diet so those two aren't looking like they're up to mischief but that little group around there looks like they are now there looks to be some stealthy climbing going on oh no a little bit to the right there Dave on the ground a little bit to the left. There we go. Look at those little ones. On the floor, on the ground. Oh, he's on. Th he's coming down. Uh, Kitty Cat is wondering, do warthogs and baboons often hang out together? Oh, I've seen them quite often together here in the Mara, uh, but I wouldn't say it's, a, it's an everyday occurrence. The baboons will actually hang out with lots of different animals. Now, warthog, uh, bushbuck, and uh, there are bushbuck in these forests as well. What they'll do is they'll often, especially when the, the diospiruses are, are fruiting, they'll take advantage of the baboons feeding up in the trees and will actually feed underneath uh, while they are, are feeding. Another thing that they do take advantage of is when the baboons are up in a sausage tree feeding on the flowers, those very sweet flowers with lots of nectar, um, and baboons are quite messy eaters, so they drop quite a lot, and quite a few different species will take advantage of um, the baboons' messy feeding habits and what they drop to the ground. Hey, pig. Hi, 
Hi, Jeffrey. In Texas, Jeffrey is wondering, would these baboons also be a threat to leopard cubs? Most definitely, and lion cubs for that matter. Um, if the mo mom is away, they will definitely uh, kill any predator's cubs that they come across. Now, those ones who weren't being up to too much mischief earlier are now full of mischief. Uh, it seems like there's been a few more recruits that have climbed the tree. And they're keeping an eye on us from up high. Quite a peaceful scene here so far this morning. Sometimes baboons can be quite... Uh, what's the word? Vicious and boisterous. But it seems to be quite calm here this morning. Everyone just warming up in the lovely morning sun. Lots of games about. Mercedes is wondering, what is the lifespan of a baboon? Well, in captivity, I've heard they can live well over sort of 20, 25 years, but in the wild, probably close 10 to 15 at the most. Uh, but it all, it all depends on the area, uh, the sort of external factors, amount of predators, pressure from humans. Uh, so it's difficult to say for sure, but uh, it, can, it can vary depending on area and predator numbers. Lots of oh, some dominance display going on there between two little ones. Now, of course, the the social hierarchy in a baboon troop is is fascinating, and it's it's well with the males, it's it it's it can be constantly in flux, and uh, you've got. Normally in a big troop you'll have up to about 10 dominant dog baboons, those are the big male baboons. They're in charge of security uh, and sorting out any uh, family arguments and whatnot. Now, female b uh, baboons have a, have a very strict hierarchy as well. But if you're a, a smart, low-ranking female, you are able to, to sort of up your social stance for a while. You can never actually climb the social uh, female hierarchy, but you can befriend and groom and tickle and uh, keep a big male happy, who's one of the dominant males, and he will protect you from the other females. But that, of course, only works uh, while that male baboon is in charge and as long as you can sort of keep his favors. And so it is, it is a, it's a very interesting thing to watch, and that's why um, they are such a studied creature. And also, unlike a lot of uh, the more studied creatures, like lions and cheetahs that tend to sleep quite a lot, baboons are almost always active during the day. They're always up to something. There's a little tiny baby being manhandled on the ground just below that. There we go, a little bit. There we go. There, there we go. Escape! Now, Gail is wondering... Oh, there we go! <laughs> oh, so cute! Gail's wondering, who are the baboon's predators? Oh, there's just so much happening here. There, those two are about to drop one. <laughs> Uh-oh! Can you get up? Yes, back up again. I think that branch might be a bit small for two of you. Yes, well done. Safely to a, a thicker branch. Gail's wondering who is baboon's main predators. Um, you would probably leopards, lions, are definitely the two main predators of baboons, and uh, the small baboons, young baboons, martial eagles, uh, will be a. Uh, Another another predator. Oh, look at this this dominance display going on here. See see there. Oh, that just happened that. So that female walking away almost pushed herself onto that young male, uh, even dominating him a bit. And he he sort of just had to sort of love her before getting into trouble. So there's all of these little interactions that are constantly happening. But sorry, Gail, another one of the yeah, the baboon's predators, martial eagles, crowned eagles. Um, and even occasionally pythons. Right, most of the troop is about to disappear into... Ooh, he's he. Now, uh, where is he sitting? That looks like quite a male. But look at that wound on his lip. So he's obviously lost a fight. Or he might have won the fight, but he didn't come off scot-free. Looks like quite an old male, actually, as well. Well, we're going to leave our lovely little baboon 
group and we're going to continue searching for well, whatever we can find. Hopefully there's a leopard somewhere along this uh, forest line um, and while we do that it seems like Taylor is still looking for lions.